Good morning, church. Y'all are involved in all sorts of conversations. Again, good morning, church. Good morning. We are so glad that you're here, whether you are a first-time guest, a long-time member, haven't been here a while, or you're watching us on our live stream. We are so glad that you're here, and we hope that you have an encounter with our risen Savior today. And because of that, you're not the same when you leave here this morning. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in the life of the church, and so I hope you will bear with me for just a couple of moments as I walk through some of those events. Uh, first of all, uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday, uh, is the, uh, at the, the training session for the new teachers who are coming into Ector County ISD, and we're blessed. We're going to have uh, Casey Peoples, our youth pastor, Janice Wilson, our children's pastor, and a couple of volunteers who are setting up a booth at that, uh, that training session. They're going to tell the new teachers about our church, about our children's center, and all the wonderful opportunities we have here. So hopefully we'll have uh, the opportunity to make some, some new relationships tomorrow. Uh, also next week on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, the last day of the month of July, uh, we're having dart wars again for our youth. And so from 4 to 9.30, our youth will be, uh, let's just say, taking over a lot of the church, uh, shooting darts at one another. You may not think that's fun, but our youth love that. So we're glad to have them here. And if you have any questions about that, you can say, see KC and he will tell you all about it. Uh, next Sunday, which is the first Sunday in August, uh, we're having our uh, blessing of the backpack. So all those children or youth or college students who are about ready to start school again, we invite you to bring your notebooks, your backpacks, your briefcases, whatever it might be. And we want to also invite anyone who is involved uh, in teaching or administration or driving a bus, anyone who is helping out in our education system, we again invite you to be here next Sunday for that uh, blessing of the backpacks. Uh, then on August 11th, uh, that is the day that uh, Shari, our organist and pianist, will be back with us on the piano and the organ. And I know Caitlin's hiding back over there, but we've been delighted to have Caitlin Peoples fill in while Shari has been away. Uh, also, the following week, lots of things going on. On Sunday, August 18th, uh, our chancel choir, who has been enjoying their summer off. Can I get an amen choir, folks? They said amen. They will be back on the chancel platform on August 18th. So that's coming very soon. And then the final announcement I have is uh, September 8th. Uh, I've been reminding all of us for the last several weeks, but that is the Sunday we are dubbing as the Welcome Home Sunday. We hope that you will invite family, friends, maybe folks who you've not seen in church in a while. Invite them to church on September 8th. That's also the Sunday that we are changing our worship and our Sunday school times. We'll have our Sunday school at 915 We'll have a time of fellowship at 1015, and then our traditional service begins here in the sanctuary at 1030 a.m. Two other important items on that Sunday, September 8th. One, uh, I know some of you in this uh, sanctuary this morning or maybe watching online used to be in the Mosaics Sunday School class, which takes place uh, upstairs. That Mosaic Sunday School class will be restarting again in the meals, both Kimberly and Ronnie, wherever Ronnie went, they will be uh, leading uh, that Sunday school class and they've already shared with me how they're going to be selecting some curriculum for that so there'll be more information about that soon but Mosaic Sunday school class beginning again 9 15 a.m. on Sunday September 8th also on that same day after worship after we finish our 10 30 a.m. worship service we will go over to the fellowship center for a meal we'll share in a meal uh, Sam Howe and his crew will be serving the meal so we hope Again, everybody will not just invite folks to church on Sunday morning, but hopefully we'll all go over to the Fellowship Center together uh, and join some great conversation and some great food as we kick off our, our fall season. And so the, the last thing I have to say is in just a minute, uh, we're going to stand and we're going to share the peace of Christ with those around us, uh, letting everybody know that we talk to and whose hand we shake, that they are a child of God and we love them and may the peace of Christ be on them. So before I ask you to stand up and do that, uh, I want to say to everybody, again, whether you're here in person or watch, watching online, we are so glad that you're here. Welcome home. And now with that, I invite us to stand and share the peace of Christ with those in our midst.
whenever you're ready. Yep. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield, though troubles linger still. Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me. Yours is the victory. Whom shall I Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are faithful. before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Amen. Thank you, Kenneson and Caitlin. Let us now bow our heads as we go to the one who is always by our side. Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, so much for the gift of this beautiful day. Lord, we hope that you will allow us to keep our eyes and ears and hearts open to feel and to see and to hear all that you place before us this day. Lord, we love you. We are your children who have come to worship and praise your holy name, to draw closer to you and closer to one another. And Lord, even as we gather, as our creator, as our redeemer, as our sustainer, Lord, you know what we're going through in life. You know, Lord, our needs. You know, Lord, our concerns. But even though you know these things, Lord, you desire us to bring these forth to you. And so, Lord, this day we pray for those who are hurting, those that may be physically hurting, maybe recovering from surgeries or surgeries coming soon. We pray, Lord, that you would provide that healing as only you can. For, Lord, those who might be struggling in some area of their life, we pray, Lord, that you would... Give them the ability to see and to hear and to feel, Lord, what you're calling them to do and how you're calling them to move forward in this time. Lord, we each have our own needs, our own concerns, our own desires, our own wants. 
And Lord, even as we think about those things, Lord, we desire to be yoked to you where our thoughts are your thoughts. Our desires are the same as your desires. Lord, as we gather this day, we pause in this holy moment to lift aloud to you and to others those things that are on our hearts. Lift aloud to you, Lord, those concerns as well as those praises, Lord, that you blessed us with. So, Lord, in this holy time, may you hear our prayers as we offer them up to you. Lord, hear these prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Oh, good and gracious God, we know and we trust, Lord, that you've heard these prayers that we've lifted aloud. And Lord, we know that you're already working on our behalf to, to tend to those needs, those cares, those hurts, those concerns, those praises. And now, Lord, we pause for just a moment to lift aloud to you silently those things that we cannot say out loud, knowing that you'll hear these unspoken prayers as well. Thank you, O oh God, for hearing all our prayers. And now, O oh Lord, we continue in this holy time of prayers. We join our hearts, our minds, our voices together and pray the prayer that your Son, our Savior, the Christ, taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you're able, we invite you to stand as this morning Ronnie Neal leads us in our call to worship. If you'll join with me responsibly our call to worship. Let us start this service well by reminding ourselves that it is not we who chose Christ, but Christ who chose us. that we are not here because of our goodness, but because of Christ's grace. that we are not here to enlighten ourselves, but to allow Christ to enlighten us. that we have not come to be entertained. Amen. Amen. Please join me for hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, verses 1 and 2. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never cease. Sing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy 
my good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Now would you turn with me to number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. You may be seated, and I want to invite the children to come forward for children's time. And here comes Miss Janice. And it's one week in a row, Miss Janice, that I have not failed to forget. Remember your microphone. Good morning. We do. We may talk to them from their pews. We'll see. Mama says she's bringing them, so. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, last Sunday, if y'all were not here, the whole time during the children's time, Zechariah just praised God. We'll see what happens this morning. There we go. Hello? Okay. We'll see if Z's going to preach to us today up close. All right. Well, we're going to, I may be preaching to you, uh, talking to you guys too. All right. Let me ask you this. What is this? What is it, Arlette? Yeah, what is it? Phone. Is it a phone? Is it a phone? It's a cell phone. Got my cell phone. All right. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been talking to someone, trying to visit with someone, and they're not paying attention to you because they are distracted by their cell phone? Yes. That happens? Yes. Can oh you imagine? Goodness. And you know what? I'll admit, I've probably been guilty of it too. Yeah? Yeah, you think you're something, your cell phone's more important than talking to a person, right? 
All right. Well, let me ask you this. It's kind of disappointing. It's kind of frustrating when this happens to you. And if you, you, want, you, know, you need to be knowing, looking at what's in front of you. Let me ask you this. Did Jesus, in Jesus' time, did they have cell phones? No. No. But they had other distractions in Jesus' time. There was a time, Pastor Steve is going to talk about Martha and her sister Mary today, right? And Jesus is coming to their house. What happens when somebody's coming to your house? What is your, what does your mama ask you to do when, you come to, when somebody's coming to your house? Clean your clean room. Clean your room. Clean your, your house. Toys. Put up your toys. You know what happens at my house? I have a laundry room. I throw everything in the laundry room. So if you come to my house for a party, don't go into my laundry room. All right? But you know what? Martha, Jesus was coming to Martha's house. Mar Jesus was coming to Martha and Mary's house. And Martha was more concerned about how her house was, about the food and picking up and cleaning. But Mary was not. Mary sat at Jesus' feet, and she was listening to Jesus and what God was telling her, or what Jesus was telling her. And Martha got upset, and she went, and she, I guess she could say she tattled or she complained to Jesus, Why, look, I'm doing all this, why is, get Mar Mary to help me. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but there's there is one thing that is the most important, and Mary has discovered it. Mary discovered that it's, Jesus doesn't care what your house looks like, doesn't care what food you give him, doesn't care if your house is dirty. He cares about people. He wanted people. That's what he wants. And that's how, that's how he feels about us. So it is important to know you know, it's important for us to be careful that we don't get busy doing the little things, the things that are important, the activities, even if they're good activities. We need to remember to sit and listen to Jesus. It is important to slow down and, as Pastor Steve is going to tell us today, choose what is better. Choose what is better. Okay? So that is our choice. We need to listen to our parents. We need to, when somebody's speaking to us, we need to make sure we listen to them and choose what is best. Okay, let's pray. Can you, can you put your hands together? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. help us remember that you are the most important thing in our lives. Don't let us get so busy that other things are more important than you, than spending time with you. You are our best choice. Amen. All right. Amen. Ushers, please come forward and congregation join in the offertory prayer. If you'll join with me. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give your whole selves to you. Please take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
would you stand with me? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please remain standing for the scripture reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Hear the word. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. You may be seated. So I have sang this song before uh, once or twice. Um, I've shared it with y'all. This, this is a very important song to me. It, it serves as a very important reminder for me. Um, and it kind of leads into what Pastor Steve is going to be talking about later. Um, remembering what is important. And for me, a lot of that is, is the gratitude that I have towards God for all that he has done in my life uh, day in and day out. And so... Uh, we'll do that for you today. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express? I could sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, because all that I have is a heart. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again, cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know it's not much, but I have nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your soul. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I have nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Kenneth, and thank you for sharing what that song meant to you. And I've got to tell you, before I get to today's message, I was uh, uh, listening to that song, and I was singing it, and I don't know if it was coming through the speakers. I turned my mic off, so sorry if that came across. Anyway, long story, that is a beautiful song, and, and Kenneth and if I might do some just inner office work right now, how about on September 8th, when we come back for our Welcome Home Sunday, we're going to do that song again, but the entire congregation is going to sing it, our choir is going to sing it, we're all going to sing that together, because we have been through a lot personally, professionally, in our personal lives, in our corporate lives, as a church family. There's been a lot of stuff that's gone onto the bridge, and we are all grateful that God has been present with us all that time. So we'll sing that beautiful song on September 8th. And so let me just take a moment to recenter myself as we get ready for this morning's uh, message. So let's, let's bow our heads and go to Almighty God in prayer now. Oh, good and graceful grace-filled and loving God, Lord, we are indeed grateful for the many, many ways you make your presence known in our lives. Lord, we pray that as each passing day goes by that we just become more and more aware, Lord, of your presence in our lives, of your call on our lives, and how we live our lives as faithful, committed followers of your Son, Jesus, day after day after day. And now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts this day might be pleasing and acceptable to you and draw us oh so closer to your loving presence. These things we ask in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. You know, this is the uh, last Sunday for this message series, Choices, and I want to do so by asking a question. You don't have to answer out loud, but you can. But have there been times in any of our lives when you've wished for just a little extra time? Don't all shout out at once. But yes, I mean, so often we find ourselves wishing we had just a little more time, maybe to do that one thing that's really important to us. Most of the people say they wish they had more time to, to rest or relax or to spend time with their kids, to maybe garden or fish or to do something that's fun in their lives. But if you're like a lot of people in the world, they can't find the time to do those things they really want to do because they're so worried about the other things, cleaning the dishes, helping the kids, completing projects at work, bills to pay and kids to raise, and on and on and on. Amen. And with that in mind, I want to share what I think are the two most common responses that we often hear when we ask someone, how are you doing? 
quite often when I ask someone how you're doing, I get this, I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's just kind of a passing, very surface level response. The other response that I think we often hear, the one that I've been thinking about all week long, is that response that we get that says, I'm busy. How are you doing? I'm busy. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just busy. I'm busy, busy, busy. We say that, don't we? We say that we are busy. I have never asked a person how you're doing, and they've said, you know what? I'm relaxed. All is good. I've got all the time on my hands to do whatever I want to do. Not much going on. I've never heard that response. Again, quite often the response is, how are you doing? And it's, I'm busy, which is what I want to focus on today. Because in truth, I think we all have time for whatever we choose to have time for. Yes, we have jobs or we have school or we have family responsibilities that can keep us busy. But we do, it seems, find a way to make time for the things that we choose to have time for. And this is true regardless of what season of life we might be in. And so with that in mind, I want to talk about this one final choice that we're going to be talking about today. And that is the choice whether or not we're going to choose that which is important over that which is urgent. And I know with God's help, we will indeed be empowered to do just that. Now, as I say, we have to make a choice between what is important over urgent. I know a lot of you might be thinking, well, I thought urgent things are important. Or you may think that urgent things are always important. And so what I want to do is to begin by trying to make a distinction between those two terms, urgent and important. Because there's a difference, and yes, there's a correlation between the two. So let me give us a few examples. For example, if you are a business owner and you've got an upset and angry customer, dealing with that customer and taking care of their needs is urgent. But let's talk about this. It's something maybe more important would be creating a system that keeps customers from getting upset. That's indeed important. So two different things. One is urgent. One is important. What about if your car engine needs repair because you didn't change the oil in it? And it seized up. Getting that car motor fixed is urgent. But what is changing the oil and checking the engine oil in your car? It's, it's important, right? Because it's important so you don't run out of oil and seize up your engine or have other problems later. Let's take another example, which I think happens all the time. If you're really, really sick because you haven't taken care of yourself, maybe you haven't slept or maybe you, you're overwhelmed for because you're simply doing too much. Going to the doctor all of a sudden becomes urgent because you need to get treated and get to feeling better. But taking care of your body so that you don't have to go to the doctor, I would argue, is what's really important. And that's why choosing what's important over urgent is such an important choice. I want to share a quote with you this morning. This quote is from Seth Godin, who is kind of a marketing guru. And he says this about the difference between urgent and important. He says, if you choose what is important, you won't deal with as many things that are urgent. And I think the opposite of tr- is true as well. If you're always having to choose what's urgent, then you're not going to be dealing with as many things that are really important. The choices we make on a day-to-day basis matter. And to illustrate this, we've already heard Ronnie read from Luke chapter 10, but I want us to remind us of that story. We heard how Jesus and the disciples had made their way to a village where a woman named Martha opens her home to them. We are told then that she has a sister Mary who who chooses to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to him. Meanwhile, Martha is distracted with all the preparations that she feels she has to make. Two different sisters and two different responses. And you heard what Janice said earlier. You know, Martha does as so many of us would do. She's overwhelmed by what she sees as urgent, so overwhelmed, in fact, that she misses what's most important. And we can't blame her, right? Because Jesus is in the house, and she wants to have everything in that house perfect. And just like Janice said, how many of us, if we knew of someone that was famous or somebody that was really respected and important was coming over to our house, we would probably go into a frenzy mode, making sure that everything in the house is cleaned up. So Martha reacts as many of us would in that situation, and in doing so, she misses what's really important. She gets frustrated with all these preparations that need to be taken care of, while her sister has the audacity 
Her sister has the audacity just to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him. And so what does Martha do? Well, she goes to Jesus and she says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. You know, I wonder, I wonder how many of us, including myself, far too often faithfully pursue what's urgent while neglecting, while forgetting, while not having enough time for what's most important. With that in mind, I want to share a question that I've been thinking about all week long, and it's this. What is the most important thing that you have been distracted from doing? Think about your life right now. Is there something really important that you really want to do, but you have been distracted? You've been distracted from doing that for some reason or another. It's not unlike some of the things we talked about last week when we talked about choices we make between discipline and regret. When thinking about what we've been distracted from pursuing, when thinking about what we've been distracted from doing in our lives, like spending quality time with Jesus or studying and reflecting on God's holy word or aligning our heart with his will, maybe that's one of the things we've been distracted from doing. Maybe some of us would say that we've been so busy doing things for our children or grandchildren that we really haven't enjoyed our time with them. Some of us. Some of us, maybe, if we're really honest, we have been so involved with our children and our grandchildren, maybe so child-centered that our life revolves around those kids. And you may think, well, Pastor, what's wrong with that? I love my kids and my grandkids, and that's, that's great. But some people I've noticed in life go too far. And by that, maybe they're so child-centered that they forget their, their marriage and they neglect that and they neglect that foundation that helps hold that whole family and the children and the grandkids together. Maybe some, when thinking about what they have been distracted from pursuing, they think about their physical bodies because there's so much urgent things to do out there. And so as a result, maybe we have been distracted from pursuing a better diet and besides, maybe fast food is convenient. And after all, who has time to exercise in the busyness of life? Now for some, some maybe what you've been distracted from pursuing because of all the urgent things going on around you, maybe it's something more internal. Maybe there's an addiction or a habit that's reoccurring in our lives that we need to deal with. Maybe it's something that we need to confess and get help with because we just haven't taken the time to tend to it. It's really important, but we haven't dealt with it because we've been distracted by so many other things going on. In our text, as we saw, Martha is distracted. And she gets upset, and then she complains to Jesus. But I want to remind us of what Jesus' response to her was. He says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Think about those lines, you are worried and upset about many things that Jesus said. I want to be honest, maybe nobody in this room, this would not be the case for, but you probably know people who if they had a life verse in their life, it would be that, that you are worried and upset about many things. I hope that's none of our life verses here this morning. But think about it in your own life. Are you worried all the time about getting everything done for your kids, your spouse, picking up all the clothes off the floor, getting the homework done, paying the bills, doing the yard work, and doing all the other chores you need to get done? How are you getting to get it all done, and do you worry about this? Maybe you are. Maybe you are worried and upset by many things, but remember Jesus' words to Martha. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. And then Jesus says this, Martha has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What has Mary done? She made a choice, and in doing so, she has chosen what Jesus says is better. Martha surrendered to the urgent. Mary, on the other hand, chose what was important. The simple truth is that if we are not intentional about this, the urgent things will crowd out the important things in our life, and this happens all the time. Remember what I said at the beginning, we generally make time for those things that we want to make time for. And with God's help, we can choose to do the important things versus the urgent things. 
Now, as I've tried to do throughout this series, I want to give some practical tools that I hope we can use. Use so that we are better able to make the right choices. And the reason I want to do that, because I know myself, left to my own urges, my own thoughts, my own desires, those urgent things are going to press out the important things. So these tools, I hope, will empower us to make the right choice. The first thing is this. We need to be very, very selective in our yeses. We should be incredibly careful and prayerful about what we say yes to. In fact, I'd argue for most people today, the barrier to a meaningful life is not a lack of commitment, but in fact, overcommitment in our lives. Busyness does not necessarily equal productivity. Busyness does not necessarily equal fulfillment. In fact, most people, instead of adding to their to-do list, and I love to-do lists, I've got one. But maybe instead of adding to our to-do list, maybe we should create a to-don't list. Those things that don't add anything to our lives that we just need not to, to do anymore. You know, some of the most successful people I know are very successful and strategic in what they say yes to. They say no to a lot of things, and why do they do that? The people that I know are successful say no to some very good things so they can say yes to the most important and the very best things. No to the good and yes to the very best. The best leaders do more of what matters most, I would argue. The best parents and grandparents don't do more. The best parents and grandparents do more of what matters most. The best teachers don't do more. They invest their energy in more of what matters most. Similarly, the best and most committed followers of Jesus don't do more. They do more of what brings glory to God. So let's be very selective in our yeses. The next one is this. I believe that we should remind ourselves of what's important. You heard Kennison a while ago sharing with the congregation what helps him remind himself of what's important. And we need to find ways to do that. And for me personally, this really became something that I became much more aware of because of my daughter. This was back in 2008. I was serving as the associate pastor of First Methodist Church in Corsicana. I loved my job there as much as I already loved my job here. But what I found myself doing is every time I went home, I had my laptop open or I had my phone in my hand. I was always doing something, and so I was always talking to someone about the church, talking to other people about our church, or doing things for the church, and I rationalized because I was doing God's work that that was okay. And I did this, as Janice was talking about, when we were sitting at the dinner table eating, or when we were watching a show, I was always on my phone or my laptop. And it was one night at dinner, we were sitting there eating, and my daughter, who was a senior in high school, said, Dad... Even when you're not, even when you're home, you're not really home. I know the church is important, but is not your family important too? Ouch. What she said was very, very true. And regardless of who we are, what season of life we're in, whether we're still working or we're, we're retired, the work that we have to do is never done. And so we need ways to continually remind ourselves of what's important. Now, what would that look like in your life? Well, maybe for some, it's hanging pictures on the wall at your office or your home. Maybe lifting up those things that are important to you in your prayer life every single day, asking God to help you honor and cherish those relationships so that you might be able to tend to those things which are really important. And I do both of those things, and I have been doing so for a number of years, but I want to share something else with you that I do on a regular basis that helps me remember what's truly important. And I think some of you in here uh, have playlists, playlists that you have on your phone that you listen to when you're outside gardening or you're walking through the neighborhood or you're just going about your daily life. You have this playlist you play. And I, I have one playlist on my phone, only one. I've had that same playlist for years, and uh, there's only nine songs in that playlist. And I put that playlist on when I go run around the neighborhood. I've only got nine songs on that playlist, and so I hear them over and over, but I've, six of those songs are praise songs. I've got 10,000 reasons on there, and here I am to worship, and hearing those songs as I jog reminds me of my love of God and what God has done in my life and how important God is to me. 
Another song I have on that playlist is Chicago's You're the Inspiration. That was a song played at my wedding back in 1987. And that song reminds me of how precious my beautiful wife is and how blessed I am that she's in my life. I also have Bob Carlisle's Butterfly Kisses. Butterfly Kisses is a song that reminds me of my beautiful daughter and how important she is to me in my life. Just a little aside, as my daughter's wedding approached and as the wedding ended, you have to be careful with some songs that might make you cry, especially while you're jogging. It can get you into trouble, but I digress. The third, the other song I want to lift up that I have on that playlist is Brian Adams' Summer of 69. Now, in the summer of 69, I was only three years old, but that is a great song to run to, but it's also a song that reminds me of family and friends and how very important they are in my life. I don't know what it is for you, but we have to find ways to remind ourselves of what is most important. And then thirdly, we have to do first what matters most. We have to stop thinking that when things slow down, I'll do that thing that's important. When the kids are gone and the project at work is done, I'll do it. No, whatever matters most, we need to do this first. And for those of you that maybe have not reached the age of retirement yet, and you're thinking that when I get to that point of retirement, I'm going to have all the time on my hands to do whatever I want to do. Now, I'm a long ways away from retirement, but I have not talked to one single retired person, I don't think, that tells me that they are more busy in retirement than they are when they work. So don't be thinking about when you're retired, you can do those things. We need to do them now. You know, in Luke's story about Martha and Mary, we get this very clear picture of what matters most. And that picture that Jesus gives us, that, that Matthew gives, excuse me, Luke gives us, is that Mary chose what's better. She spent time in the presence of the Master. Now, I want to be completely blunt and honest for a moment. There are probably some of us here this morning, maybe watching this morning, followers of Jesus who are not aligning their hearts toward Jesus every single day, who are not seeking Jesus first in the morning, and maybe who are not letting God's holy word be a regular part of their life. And you might think, well, that's kind of bold of you to say that, and let me share with you why I say that. I share that because I know human nature. I know my own struggles and the challenges that I have in my life. And I know the fact that we often add more and more to our life and we crowd out the things that are most important in life. You know, on the inside, I know we really do all love Jesus and we do want to make a difference, but we need to seek Him first in all things. Why do we need to do that? We need to do it because it, it fuels every other part of our life. Our relationship with Jesus Christ affects every aspect of our life. And why do we not sometimes draw close to God? Why does God sometimes get edged out of our life? Maybe it's because we're, we're tired. And why are we tired? Maybe we're tired because we're busy. And why are we busy? Maybe because we have said yes to so many things that we really want to do. What we really want to do, we don't end up doing because we've said yes to too many other things that are not nearly as important. As I said, I believe the most important thing we should do every day is to spend time with our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We need to see God's presence in our lives every day and ask God to allow His Spirit to help us align our hearts, our, our minds, our very wills with God's will for our life. And if we do those things, we're going to be able to make the best and most important choices in our life. You know, throughout this four-week series, we've talked about choices of purpose over popularity, surrender over control, discipline over regret, and now this morning, important over urgent. These are not easy choices to make, but my hope and prayer for each of us is those, cho those choices would get much, much easier if we would spend time with the divine. If we would ask the Lord, Lord, what is it you desire of me? How might I serve you better? And then day by day, moment by moment, week by week, year by year, those things that might have been tough for us to do become easier and become easier. They come, become like muscle memory. They become second nature. And so my hope and prayer for each of us is that indeed we will be able to make all those choices, not just the important versus urgent, but all the other choices we've made as well. That is my hope for us personally and corporately as a church. Would you bow as we pray? Oh, good and gracious and loving God, 
Lord, we pray the presence of your spirit in our hearts and minds and very lives working in us, around us, and through us would help us to draw close to you, would help us to seek you first in all things, would enable us, Lord, to know the choices we need to make in all areas and all facets of our life, Lord, so that we might love you fully and we might love those around us more fully. Lord, these things we ask boldly in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ and all the church said, amen. In just a moment, we're going to stand and sing our closing song, our song of invitation, which is hymn number 77, How Great Thou Art. As we sing that song, I want to invite us. If there are those who maybe want to come forward and kneel at the communion rail and pray, we invite you to do so. Maybe there's some among us that just want to recommit their lives to Christ. Or maybe there's some among us that want to join the membership of this church. Whatever it might be, we invite you as you're able to stand as we join our voices, voices together singing, How Great Thou Art. Let us stand as we sing, please. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. For watching me uh, put the candles out, uh, note to self, next time I grab a candle snuffer, Make sure the snuffer's on the end. Just keeping it real. We're about to walk out, and so I thought it was important. We didn't have our acolytes this morning, and so I want to make sure we all understand when we leave this place, we take the flame of Christ out into the world. And part of the way we do that is we remember what our mission statement is. So let us remember what our mission is. Our mission is to make committed followers of Jesus Christ who love God, love others, and boldly witness their faith throughout the world. Let us all do just that this week. Let us bow as we pray. Oh, good and gracious and loving God, Lord, fill us with your loving presence. Lord, fill us with your loving presence so full that we just can't help but overflow with your love to all the places and to all the people we see this week. Lord, we love you. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.